a friend of mine on Facebook posted recently. Uh, Spires FPV just recently posted a picture of his DJI transmitter with Radio Master AG01 gimbals on it. And I saw that and it was just something that I just had to do. So I literally went out same day and got myself a set of gimbals and installed them same day after seeing that picture. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a how-to video on how to do that in case you want to do it for yourselves. This is the DJI FPV transmitter with AG01 gimbals already installed. I tell you what, it's it's a whole lot nicer with these gimbals. First thing I guess I should talk about is why do I use the DJI FPV transmitter? Because a lot of people are probably wondering why I would use a DJI FPV transmitter. I have a lot of different transmitters and uh, this is my favorite transmitter to use for my freestyle FPV drones. A lot of people are worried about fail safes and losing signal and things like that. So a lot of people use Crossfire and I do use Crossfire on a lot of my rigs, but for my standard FPV freestyle, I choose to use the DJI FPV remote. And I'll talk to you why about that. The first reason is that I have never had a fail safe. The entire time I've been flying it, I've been flying it for about two years now. Never had a single fail safe. The transmitter can go farther than the video signal can. And that's what's majorly important with the transmitter is that it goes farther than your video signal. As long as you can fly farther than you can see, then you're not going to lose signal and have a fail safe. And since I've never had a failsafe with it, I don't worry about it. I have flown some crazy spots. I have flown in Detroit in some of the largest abandoned buildings that I've ever seen with concrete and metal everywhere. And being able to fly all the way to one side of the bando and all the way to the other side of the bando completely through the entire thing without any problems with video or failsafes is amazing. So anyway, the, uh, the DJI FPV transmitter is my favorite transmitter to use for my freestyle drones. Another reason that I like to use it is because when you have the receiver as part of the DJI Air Unit or the DJI Vista, you don't have to have any additional antennas on your drone. You don't need to have a crossfire antenna that's going to get chopped up by your props when you crash. You don't have to have a receiver in your drone because it's all built into the DJI Air Unit or the DJI Vista. So there's less antennas, less parts to put in, and less wires to wire up. So that's another great bonus. When you're building a drone that's bre breaking all the time, it's awesome to just have it to be easy to build. That's two of the reasons why I use the DJI FPV remote. The other thing is it's really small. You know, it fits in my bag easily. My only two complaints were the uh, form factor, which isn't terrible, and the gimbals. You know, so we corrected one of those. <laughs> I have this this Radio Master running Crossfire, and I really like the way this Radio Master feels in my hands. It uh, has that nice gamepad style remote. Crossfire fits on the back of it nicely, and this is what I'm using on some of my projects, project builds, and the st you know that we put on the episodes and things like that. I'm really enjoying that remote. Unfortunately, it doesn't have metal gimbals, and unfortunately, it's not set up for DJI. So let's talk about the gimbals. So these AG01 gimbals from Radio Master are all metal CNC milled gimbals. These are the nicest gimbals I've ever felt in all the transmitters I've used. They just are very, very accurate and they have that nice tactile click uh, versus the plastic where if you push down hard on it, you might end up overshooting the numbers in the software. These are extremely accurate and I just love the way they feel. And they're very, very adjustable. I actually took away a ton of spring tension. I don't like a whole lot of spring tension because when I go from left to right on yaw and roll, I don't want to feel that center click very prominently because what'll happen is it'll make your flying less smooth from what I've noticed. So I use a very, very little, very, very low spring tension on mine. Some people like it super springy. Um, me personally, I don't. It's still got tons of tension but um, just not as much as the default. All right, so I guess we can get into the, the transmitter gimbal install. So let me switch my screen over here to the video that I sort of partially edited so I could kind of talk through it. So this is the guy that inspired me to get it started and get it done. Uh, Spires FPV, you guys can check him out on Facebook and on YouTube. He's actually posted a lot of photos on Facebook and a little bit of tips and tricks on how to get it done. And I'm gonna walk you through the build process that I went through with this gimbal install. This is me at home. I previously recorded this as I was doing it during the project. Just taking apart the thing. The first thing you gotta do is pull the battery out. So we'll go ahead and pull the battery out, close the lid, and there are a total of eight screws in this transmitter holding it together. You got the two on the top here you got two on the bottom, and you got 
two under each of the grips. And in order to get to the bottom ones, you just kind of take a razor blade and pop these little rubber things off. They're just double-sided taped on. Get your screwdriver in there and take out those two screws. And then if you just peel off the grips on the side, you have to pull them back a little bit far and you can reach in there and get the other two screws out of each side of this transmitter. It's really easy to take apart, honestly, uh, compared to some of the other transmitters I've taken apart. Uh, you don't really have to do anything, anything inside the battery compartment at all. Just pull out those eight screws and you kind of have to manhandle a little bit to get it off, but it kind of pops right off for the most part. It's a little clippy. You got one cord, and the cord's pretty long, so you don't have to worry too much about it, but be careful not to rip that cord out. Just kind of pull the plug out, set your case aside, and we're ready to pull out the gimbals. So I put mine on top of a pillow because I don't want to damage the gimbals as I'm installing them, and that just keeps them kind of protected. Uh, so there's a total of four screws inside the gimbal, and two of them are on the bottom and easy to access. I pull those two out. The other two are on the top, and they're kind of covered up by panels. So I took out these two screws and removed the circuit board and just kind of moved it aside a little bit so that I could access the top right screw on the aileron elevator gimbal, which is the one on the left there. It's actually really easy to get to. You just kind of move that guy out of the way just a little bit and you can reach in there with your screwdriver and pull out third screw. And uh, to get to the fourth screw, we got to take out another plastic piece. This is the roller switch and we're just going to take out one screw and get that white plastic piece out of the way and just kind of move it aside and you can access the fourth screw on that gimbal. After that it just comes right out. Super easy. No big deal. This is actually a really really easy install once you have all the pieces available. Um, having to prototype and 3D print things makes it take a little bit longer so I was super excited to see that um, you know Spires FPV already provided me with at least one of the pieces that I need to make this happen. So when you go to pull this out uh, it's going to be plugged into the circuit board uh, it's got a little six pin Molex plug and you're just going to kind of unplug that guy. It's super easy. Just pull it out and set your gimbal aside. And that's the uninstallation. That's everything you got to do to uninstall the old gimbal. Super easy, super easy. So this is the new gimbal. This is the AGO-1 gimbal. And the cool thing about it is the plug on it is exactly the same as the one that came out of the DJI FPV drone. But you got to make a couple changes. This plug has six pins in it. It's got two blacks, two reds, and two yellows and they're kind of grouped into three. So what you want to do is take the, yet, take the red and the yellow wire and flip-flop them basically on each group. So each group of red and yellow you have to flip-flop and put them in the opposite position. So I take a little razor blade, pop up that little white tab right there and just kind of move them around and this is the final orientation that your wire should be in. So kind of what you want to do is just do this to both of your uh, gimbals ahead of time so that way it's ready to go and as soon as you have it set up just like this you just lift up those little white tabs and pull the plug out pl pop it back in just be careful not to damage it as soon as you have those prepped just you can just plug them right into the DJI transmitter and it recognizes it when you do get it back in there you'll have to change a couple of the directions you'll have to reverse some of the sticks so that they go the right direction but it's really easy to do in the goggles and I'll walk you through that at the end here Let's just continue. So we're just going to plug that guy right into the board and it's going to look like this when we're done. This is both of the plugs that you're going to have to unplug and replug. Uh, so this picture here comes with the manual of the AGO-1 gimbals and this is typically the orientation they want you to put it in with it up and down left and right. Uh, so this is the way it's going to be for our aileron elevator gimbal but our throttle and yaw gimbal is actually going to be 180 degrees different than this. We're actually not going to follow their advice. We're just going to reverse it in, in, the, uh, in the software, uh, the DJI goggles at the end. Uh, but this is the way they expect you to do it. So just keep in mind that you're going to be keeping it this orientation for aileron and elevator but not for throttle and yaw. Moving on. Alright, so the next thing we have to do is to, what I ended up doing was pulling these three plugs out of the main board here just to kind of get it out of the way so that it allowed me to move the ribbon cable out of the way so that I can put the 3D printed parts in. It's always a good idea to take a picture of everything before you start unplugging things so that when you go to plug it back in you know where things went. And I went ahead and took a picture for you guys just in case you forgot and for my own benefit if you happen to plug these plugs in the wrong direction, you could probably damage something, and we don't want to do that. So I definitely took a picture as to which wire went where ahead of time. 
these three plugs are all the same size, so you could easily accidentally plug them into the wrong place. So this is a 3D printed part that Spires FPV posted, and that's what we're going to use to hold down the right side of our gimbal. And it kind of goes where these arrows are pointing on the two different gimbals. The one on the left is the gimbal that we're installing right now, and the one on the right is the one that we're going to be installing next. So thank you Spires for making these parts and prototyping them. They worked out really well. They fit very well, and I didn't have to make any changes to those 3D prints. The one thing he didn't design was the uh, the screws for the other side, the mounts for the other side. He just used a washer, and I did that at first, and it was totally fine. There was nothing wrong with it, but I just wanted a little bit more security, so I designed some new washers that fit a little bit better, and I'll show you those in a little bit. And I uploaded those to my Thingiverse. In this picture here, what I ended up doing was taking out this screw. And the reason I took out this screw was because it rubs against the back plate of the DJI transmitter up against the battery plate and it makes it to where it doesn't fit properly. It's an unnecessary screw, it's a redundant screw. Uh, the screw right next to it holds it just fine so it's not necessary to have this particular screw but if you do remove that screw then it'll fit a lot better together without having to grind away as much plastic off the back of the transmitter. We'll talk more about that later when we get into the, uh, the back plate fitment. So moving back to the assembly. Uh, one other thing we're going to do is remove that part completely, all four of the screws from the aileron and elevator gimbal. On the throttle and yaw gimbal we're only going to take out the one screw but for the aileron and elevator gimbal we're going to take out all the screws and just remove that piece all together because it's not even used for the aileron and elevator at all. Uh, so we're going to pull that completely out and that gives us a little bit more space inside the transmitter for these gimbals to fit properly. This is the final result once you get those gimbals in, you're going to just kind of screw them in. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory. They just fit. Now, Spires FPV actually created a ring that filled in the gap between the gimbal and the radio case. And I didn't use those. It's about one millimeter off from the original shape. And I don't really like printing in PLA and, and PETG because it clogs my printer nozzle and stuff so I printed them at a TPU and it was just so rubbery that it didn't cooperate. There's also different tolerances between different 3D printers and the tolerance was just a little bit off on my 3D printer so they didn't fit 100%. I just kind of left them out. I didn't need them. I didn't feel like I needed them. They are a little bit off by like a millimeter but you don't really notice it and you can't really tell and I definitely can't feel it in the sticks and you can't even tell visually by looking at it unless you're really, really being picky. So I didn't put those 3D printed rings in there, and you can choose to do that or not. One of the things that Spires FPV had a problem with when he did his build was that his gimbals rubbed against the back case. And I think that he might have had a half a millimeter too, too long of a ring there, and his actually pressed against the case more than mine did. My gimbals didn't rub as much as his, and it was a little bit easier, so... Eliminating those rings just made my job a little bit easier. So if you want to print them, you can print them. It makes it look even more perfect. It centers the gimbals up 100% perfect, and it looks really nice when it's done. Uh, I just skipped that step. Let's see if I have any pictures of the, uh, the washers. So these are the three printed washers that I used on the other side of the gimbal, on the left side of the aileron elevator gimbal, and on the right side of the throttle yaw gimbal. And this is kind of like what it looks like when it's screwed in. I just put them here and here on that gimbal and on the opposite gimbal the other side. So this is a picture from Spires FPV. This is the amount of grinding that he had to do. Let me go back to that picture here. It's hard to navigate in this. There we go. Let's pause that. So he ended up grinding away all of this out of his transmitter and taking the screw out of here and chopping that off completely. And uh, I mean you could do that um, I tried to avoid doing as much as possible with the grinding and I tried to figure out exactly where it was rubbing and eliminated a lot of the need to grind away some of that. So when I actually did mine, I only had to take off a tiny bit of space. This little uh, oval shape here, I had to cut off a tiny bit of plastic there. And I'll show you in the next picture here. I had to take out one screw from right about there where I was pointing and that screw and spring is one of the holders in place that allows you to pop the battery out with the spring activated button. So I chopped off the top half of that circular, it's hard to see in the picture, there is a circular plastic ring that goes around that screw and I had to chop off the top 
of the half moon shape just to allow clearance for the gimbal uh, metal to be there. So a little tiny bit of modification to the case uh, and this thing still works perfectly fine. I'm still able to install my battery properly, have it click in place just like it did factory. That little section right there where the arrow is what I had to cut away and that's where the actual screw went. So you got to take the screw out, take the spring out, cut a little plastic away and when you put your goggle, when you put your transmitter case back together, make sure that spring still works because that's how you're going to remove your battery and get it back in place. When you install your battery, it'll clip in place with that spring because there's still two additional springs. We're only taking out one of the three springs. My battery still locks in place properly and everything worked out great. So once you get everything done and all your gimbals installed and ready to go, the next step you have to do is to go into the goggle menu and calibrate your goggles. Uh, you're going to have to have your drone ready, bound up to the transmitter and the goggles already before doing this, or bind them up. But once you have your everything bound and ready to go, your goggles and your transmitter and your drone all bound, you can plug everything in, power up your drone, power up your goggles, power, power up your transmitter, and then we're going to go into the menus and show you how to calibrate your transmitter. It's really a simple process. The first thing you're going to do is go into the goggle menu using the joystick on the goggle, and go into settings under remote controller and just click through all those menus and the first thing we're going to do is calibration so we're just going to click on calibration and we'll see this menu click on that start calibration button and just follow the on-screen prompts to calibrate your sticks and your sliders and then you'll be all calibrated and ready to go but you'll probably run into a problem where your throttle and your yaw and your aileron and your elevator are not 100% going the right direction and you might have to reverse a few things. So the next step is to go into servo setup on the left side of that screen and make sure that you reverse the aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder or whatever needs to be changed in your particular setup to match the proper orientation. And I did this just by having the drone on the ground, arming it, not giving it any throttle, and just kind of moving the sticks to see which way it was going. And it turns out in my case I needed to reverse the elevator and the rudder and leave the aileron and the throttle regular and that was perfect for me. So hopefully it's the same for you depending on which orientation you set your gimbals up. And that is pretty much it. If you want to download the prints you can go to Thingiverse and it's under Let's Fly RC on Thingiverse. Give credit to Spires FPV. I remixed his parts and just kind of added my own. The link is up there at the top there if you guys want to type that into the browser and download it. So that's it guys. That is all of the things that went into building this transmitter the way it is. I really like it. I'm really happy with the gimbals. They feel great on there and I hope you guys like it too. I hope it made it easier for you to do this project. It's a super easy install. The one thing you got to worry about is that it technically does void your warranty with DJI. So keep that in mind before performing this task. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to end the video here because there's not much more to talk about. I hope to see you guys at Quad Camp California. Hope to see you guys at Rampage. And keep watching the Rotorite channel on YouTube. And uh, check out the Rotorite store if you need any parts for your builds. Thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you next time.